All right, everybody. It is Monday, and it's an interesting day for Brandon. A wife, Shirley, like a former classmate of mine at Sanchez. She's class of 93. She was a junior when I was a senior. Shirley, say hi. 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 There she is. Shout out to Shirley, man. It's a, it's the wives that really make us all go. And uh, Brandon is actually Aww. he's on vacation right now. But just like the weather, the NWS never stops working. That's right. So we're here on vacation. I'm finally your hairy some... legs are showing. At least they were a second ago. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I'm enjoying some uh, some time off, and uh, Shirley, I want. So it's been a long time the... coming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But, you know, even and like I said, I mean, you know, even though you may be, you know, taking um, some time off work and getting some R&R, &R, getting ready for the holidays, obviously the one thing that is on your mind is this curious um, string rash, however you want to frame it, of uh, earthquakes that have been happening, not necessarily in our region, but uh, but way up north, but certainly something that uh, that we've all been thinking about. That's right. And so as we as Shirley kind of zooms in on the TV up, here's Guam right here, but in the far northern islands. Uh, near the island of Mog, we've seen a couple of earthquakes, uh, all very small in the past couple of weeks. And so overnight, we did see another one. But farther to our west southwest, just off the east coast of Mindanao, we have seen a very large cluster of earthquakes for the past few days. In fact, there was a, a fairly substantial 7.5, 7.6 earthquake a couple of nights ago. And so the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center was issuing some advisories uh, some information statements about a possible tsunami. And, and so we looked at, we saw the potential for a threat near Palau for a small tsunami uh, that was eventually uh, uh, neutralized and, uh, and that was brought down. Uh, we did not see any notable tsunami signature across the West Pacific, though at Upper Harbor, we may have seen a small signal of maybe a couple of inches. There was a small water distortion. I'm not certain that was a tsunami signal, uh, but we're going to be talking with the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center just to see if uh, if that signal was a uh, just a small distortion in the water. But, you know, we're watching this area and those red dots are indicating fairly recent earthquakes, five, six point oh's. Uh, we saw a seven point oh early this morning. And, and so that is something that we should keep in mind. We cannot forecast um, earthquakes, uh, but we're going to be watching this very closely and communicating with the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center in Hawaii. If there is a notable earthquake that generates a truly threatening tsunami threat, uh, we're going to be communicating that with the local government, the islands across the region to make sure that everybody is up on top of the latest information with any emerging tsunami threat. That's one thing I want to talk about. Yeah. And because, you know, like you said, you know, it's almost impossible to predict um, uh, earthquakes happening. And yet they tend to be within the same, you know, like eight or nine different places um, on Earth, as opposed to the kind of thing that you guys do is make fairly accurate predictions and see like these storms and weather formations actually move. And you can kind of, you know, make... Um, uh, make good guesstimates, let's call it, like, you know, as they move and as they increase in strength. So one thing that you do on um, as a federal employee is you guys work with other partners. So it's you guys, the U.S. Geological Survey, who actually does track, you know, the movements and the intersects of the tectonic plates. I'm getting all science nerdy here, which I'm sure you've got no problem <laughs> with. Um, and then, of course, the Pacific Tsunami Center. So at what point does when news like that happen, when is it your jurisdiction? And when do you actually say like, OK, and now we're going to hand it off you know, to these guys. And where does the NWS come in when, you know, when we take a look at like uh, earthquakes and tsunamis? Yeah. So in our office, we have a couple of computers that we're monitoring for any earthquakes. So once the U uh, USGS or the PTWC has determined an earthquake's location and magnitude, that will register on the computer in our office. Additionally, we have another computer that shows all the buoys across the Pacific. And so we can see the same data that they're observing, they're using to evaluate the existence of a tsunami or show the uh, the non-existence of a tsunami threat. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center, that is the department that issues all the text advisories, information statements and warnings. And we as the National Weather Service, we just uh, push that out informa that information out to uh, the Micronesian Islands. We push it out to the local emergency managers and, and to help ensure um, everything, uh, everybody is aware of the latest information. And, and then the decisions for any evacuations comes from the local island governments. Now, I know the young people, again, you know, we went through this earlier this year where, you know, there's an entire generation of Guamanians that had never been through a typhoon. This was all new to them. Um, obviously, most of us, including people my age and much older, have never experienced a tsunami. But the fact that um, one thing that our coral reef actually protects us 
uh, from maximum damage from those is uh, something that we have to our advantage. Yes, and so that's that's a really good observation. Up here near Japan, uh, 2011, that was the massive earthquake and tsunami that really devastated the eastern coast of Japan. And so you see this uh, light blue shading. That's the continental shelf off the east coast of Japan. The seafloor just gradually slopes higher and higher. And so you have the, the deep ocean water tsunami uh, that is very, um, very shallow, is very flat on the ocean surface. But as it gets the shallower waters, that tsunami slows down and it gets taller and taller. And so now you have this massive wave of water coming in and just washing ashore. For the Marianas, we just have very deep ocean all around us and then a sharply rising seafloor as we get to the coral reef. And so any tsunami is generally going to look like the high tide coming in from low tide, uh, just in a matter of uh, dozens of minutes to an hour versus that high and low tide fluctuation over six hours or so. Um, so um, most cases, we may not visually see it. The the buoys, the tide, tide stages, we'll definitely be able to discern it and we'll be able to see that in the data. Okay, real quick, but before we actually talk like about the weather, you know, and I appreciate how you kind of brought up that context about, you know, we're, we're over here, our, uh, our seafloor composition is obviously different than Japan. Does the fact that we're so close to the Marianas Trench and, you know, you've got this, you know, I mean, it's not super, super wide, but I mean, it is as part of the earth where you have this seven mile straight down dip. Does that um, take some of the, uh, the damaging impact off of tsunamis? That's a good question, and I'm glad that you brought it up because I I, I was I wanted to dig into that. It's what because I do. The, the, <laughs> I haven't got the, the answers, but I can at least ask a question. <laughs> <laughs> so these red lines, those are default lines, and it, it's not my fault, not your fault. It's all of our fault, <laughs> I guess you could say. But this is the Marianas Trench, just east of the Marianas, and so the Marianas Trench. There is that myth out here in the Marianas that the Marianas Trench protects us from tsunamis, but Actually, that is opposite the truth. Marianas oh, wow. Trench is an active fault line. We can get any, we can get earthquakes anywhere along here as a Pacific plate uh, subducts underneath the uh, the Philippine plate. And so that is an active earthquake zone. And that could generate a very damaging and threatening tsunami for us. And, and so we would not have much of a chance to get word uh, from the tsunami warning center to the islands before tsunami has uh move from the trench to the Marianas. But really what protects us is that we just have no sloping seafloor uh, via uh, a continental shelf. There you go. And science, science and so much more here. So like young people, I hope if you're watching that, I hope that gives you a little bit of a reprieve, but also, you know, that like, that, you know, that's the word and that that's just like the, the contours of the place that we live. All right. That's right. Appreciate that. Let's go back to your other job. <laughs> yes. And you're so, on vacation. Uh, what are you doing working and everything? <laughs> well, your brother's, well, your brother's off, so. It, it pays to be aware of things. And, and so I, even if I'm on vacation, I like to keep an eye on the weather. I don't like to be surprised. And, and especially if there's interesting weather coming, I want to know so I can have a camera ready and I will be looking out the window. But uh, well, the, know, the weather was certainly interesting this past weekend, Brandon, because we had, you know, these these periods of high intense heat and then like you were saying you know we had those like those cool winds and everything like that and then just rain for 20 straight minutes that's right and we had some notable wind gusts yesterday i, I think i saw from the airport yeah. observations gust up to 40 knots so that's pushing 46 47 miles per hour and, and i so, was over at the soccer field and it was really breezy yeah it, it, it felt it felt very cool we had the 5k yesterday morning but it was chilly out there for a little bit especially if you got wet that wind starts blowing but let me point out Guam. Uh, so Guam right here, uh, Saipan just to the north. And so you see a little bit of a few clusters of showers, just a series of showers. This is typical of the dry trade wind pattern. But every so often you get these little these little disturbances. It could be just a little ripple in the wind flow pattern and, and just get a little bit of lifting motion that causes those showers and clouds to develop. And so we had one of those that passed right over Guam yesterday and then it moved off by midday. Saipan, Tinian, they could see a few showers later on today. And then we just got this series, this conveyor belt of, of trade wind showers that will kind of periodically move over the islands and so on. But let me show you one other thing just to kind of discriminate some of these clouds because we can't really tell what's going on with these clouds. They're all white. Do you know uh, near Palau and Yap what, where the thunderstorms are? And so we use the infrared satellite imagery, and now we're looking at those cloud top temperatures 
that is a function of cloud height. So the higher the clouds, the brighter the colors. And so down here near Palau and Yap, we're seeing some of those reds, oranges, blacks, very high cloud tops, heavy showers, thunderstorms. But up toward the Marianas, we're just seeing grays and whites. And, and that's all indicating liquid clouds. So we're only seeing liquid water in those clouds, no ice. And so we just do not see any thunderstorms happening in these types of shower clusters. So that is standard fare uh, for the dry, uh, dry trade wind pattern that we're gonna be seeing for much of the next week. All right, so no, nothing really, really to worry about. But you know, Brandon, you are a man of many talents, and I, I for one, in the many years that we've been doing this segment, I have never doubted you know your wisdom or your intelligence. You married a Sanchez girl, so that means like you're you're the smartest person on earth, anyway. So, by the yes. way, surely great camera work on this segment, man. Take a bow. <laughs> <laughs> thank you yeah she's uh she had a, a full training scenario this morning of the past uh three minutes well so you, she's you done very your wife a very training. lovely lunch because she she has been absolutely amazing on vacation by the way so i'm, I'm gonna leave you to it because uh <laughs> enjoy, enjoy the break man you've certainly earned it thank you so much jason uh, and all the best to you all right i would thank say we'll you, talk man. to you soon but no we we will not talk to you soon because we're gonna let you enjoy your, <laughs> your your very deserved break from work so shirley brandon happy holidays to you both man we wish you the best Happy holidays. Happy holidays.